It is late at night and someone across the way is playing La Vie en Rose. It is the French way of saying, I am looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. Hi everyone, my name is Christine if you're new here. I'm a sophomore at Harvard concentrating in neuroscience with a secondary in ethnicity migration rights and today I'm filming a video all about my iPad. I've been getting a lot of requests about this and even though I'm not an expert by any means, I only just got this towards like the beginning slash middle of last year. I wanted to give you guys some tips for how to use it, maybe if you're looking to get an iPad or just got one, based off of my experience with using it for school during this past fall semester. So with this new year 2021 and new semester hopefully this can help you in some way yeah that's pretty much it we can just hop right into it so this is going to be a pretty simple video I'm just going to talk about the tools my iPad what else I use with the iPad my top apps on the iPad my top tips which is going to rely on the apps that I use and then I'll show you some of my iPad note-taking formats based off of what I did last semester so first, pretty obviously, we have the iPad. My iPad is the Space Gray iPad Pro 2020 11 inch and it has 256 gigabytes. I was really excited to buy this because I bought it with my own money, my own savings. I definitely knew that when I was getting an iPad, I really wanted to give it a try, like invest in something that was good quality. This is what I have, <laughs> but I know that there are tons of affordable options that do all the same things with the upcoming tips and apps that I'm going to be mentioning. There is a combination, I think it's the iPad 7 generation with the first generation Apple Pencil that works exactly the same, like just as well. So if you're looking for a more affordable option, then that is a combination that you could consider. So besides my iPad, you obviously need something to go with it if you're taking notes and that would be an Apple Pencil. So I use a second generation Apple Pencil. This is the one that charges by attaching to the side of the iPad. This is the front of the iPad. You would charge it by taking the flat side and attaching it to the right. You can easily charge both at the same time and it charges relatively quickly. Honestly, like 10-15 minutes to fully charge if it's like at 0%. Not even. I don't even know. I'll look it up. It's super fast, super easy, and definitely very useful for whenever you're done taking notes, you can just let it chill like that. Then of course you need to protect your iPad. So for that, you should get a screen protector and an iPad case. I use the paper-like screen protector. It's supposed to be less shiny if like light reflects on the screen and then also makes writing just a little bit easier because when you're using an Apple Pencil for the first time, it can be hard getting used to that feeling of writing with the pencil on the smooth screen. So this helps just a little bit with alleviating that discomfort and I honestly think it's a really great screen protector. I've been using it ever since I got it and it's lasted pretty well for months now So I definitely recommend that you get a screen protector like this. Hi, so I'm editing and I just wanted to pop in very quickly to add I realized I didn't really mention the fact that even though I was raving about the screen protector and all that Long story short, all you really need is like a decent maybe matte whatever your preference is, screen protector that does the job. There are tons of cheap alternatives that you could find because paper-like is not the most affordable nor necessarily the best quality. It's just a good, decent screen protector. I always like making sure to mention alternatives and all these kinds of disclaimers when it comes to purchasing things. Just wanted to make that quick note. And then you also need to get an iPad case. This one is from Etsy. I forget what store, but I'll leave it down below. This is like a space-ish theme. I didn't want to get something that was light colored because I figured that would get dirty too easily. It's done a pretty good job of protecting my iPad for all the times that I've used it over this past semester. So this cover can bend in three sections. When you open it, it turns like the screen on. The cover is magnetic, so it won't come off easily and then the rim surrounding the ipad is rubber and slightly raised above the screen so again it helps to protect the ipad all around when it's uncovered and then as you can see on the left side of the ipad when you open the case there is a little hollow section right here and that's actually for the pencil so you can put it in here and then you can store the pencil so if you're traveling around can have everything that you need right here in the case and then something i want to note with this is you can see that this folds like that so that you could use it as a stand but something i don't like about that is you can't really adjust the height it only folds in that particular manner with the triangle like that's the only possible shape i don't know if i'm doing something wrong but sometimes that can be a little bit annoying if i want to adjust the height but i can't so then i have to like lean it against something so i would advise you get one of those other ipads where this bottom portion comes out i might get another 
another iPad case soon that allows you to customize the height when it's open and propped up against the case. So maybe that's something that you could consider if you're looking into getting an iPad case. All right, so for the apps I want to recommend, I don't have a lot. I don't really use my iPad for much besides school and YouTube, but the apps that I use for them are quite reliable. So to start off with specifically school-related apps, again, I don't use a ton, but I use these apps. I use GoodNotes for studying, and that's what I'll be basing my top note-taking tip section on later on in this video. And then I also use Google Docs, Google Sheets, Jamboard. Those are all really good for whenever I'm organizing documents. We use Jamboard in our classes, kind of like a presentation app, but a ton of people can come on and write and draw on the presentation at the same time. And then I have the Canvas app. Canvas is a website that Harvard uses, so all the classes that I take, their dashboards are on Canvas. I have the app Scannable, which is actually quite good if I'm scanning documents or printed out sheets or homework assignments I suppose. I haven't really printed out many sheets but it's definitely a useful app to have so it's really good for converting from physical documents to PDFs. And then finally this is school slash life but the app Libby that my sister told me about it essentially lets you check out ebooks using any library cards that you have so if your university library card applies then you can check out ebooks from your university library if you go to a local or public library and you hold a library card there then you can check in there it doesn't apply to all libraries i don't think there's one for like harvard but i am able to do that with my local library which i have a library card for then for some of my art slash youtube apps i use fonto which is good for like thumbnails and fonts i use PixArt, which is nice for editing photos and making collages for my thumbnails as well. Sketchbook for any illustrations and such that you see in my videos. That's made using Sketchbook and I also make some thumbnails on Sketchbook. I have the app Canva. Canva is so, so amazing. If you're ever on a club or if you have to make an infographic or a poster or a flyer like in the digital format, then you can absolutely do any of that with Canva. It's really, really good, very useful, free. So that's something for sure to look into. So that's it for the apps that I use on my iPad. Now I'm going to mainly focus on how I use GoodNotes just because that's the most school-centered app that I have on my iPad and definitely the one that I used the most frequently last semester. So let's just hop right in. So I don't know what it's like for other apps. I know another top one that people use is Notability. I decided to go with GoodNotes. But on GoodNotes, you're actually able to set up folders and notebooks. So it's almost like all of your school supplies gone digital for the semester. I have a couple different folders set up. A random folder, which is just a bunch of random documents that I set up. One for my research lab that I'm an undergrad assistant for, my fall 2020 folder, which is where I went for all of my classes from last semester. So I took four classes and then I had one folder for syllabi and course information. So I always make really good use of the folders because having everything in their exact place is something that's really important for me whenever it comes to school and organization. For example, if I go to my Chem 17 folder, you can see that everything is just extremely organized into different folders. I have exam prep for when I was taking my actual exams or doing practice exams, lecture slides, review slides, my section handouts, my problem sets or homework assignments. I had a notebook for practicing and then also the textbook. So obviously this looks like a lot, but I promise that once you get used to it, it really, really is just so easy to navigate. So definitely make use of all these organizational tools that GoodNotes gives you if you do use this app. And then to go a little bit more into that, what you can do on GoodNotes is you can upload any handouts, presentation slides, documents, textbooks, even websites, all as PDFs, and then upload them to GoodNotes. So as you can see, I was able to upload my entire organic chemistry textbook, and I could look at it as a PDF file, which is incredible. So if I'm looking at pages and I wanted to make note of something, then I could be like, study this later. I could take notes directly onto the textbook, which is something that a lot of times you cannot do if you have a physical textbook. So it's definitely super Super useful and you can easily erase it all if you need to. Saves paper, saves time, saves energy. It's just a really great option overall for when you are taking notes. So you can see I have all the lecture slides for this course downloaded into my folder. I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to upload course materials onto the internet. So I'm just going to show you this first slide from lecture zero. As you can see, it's pretty much just a digital copy of those slides that are used in class during lecture. So I could literally write on it as if I'm taking notes and then follow along during during the lecture, whether it's recorded or live on Zoom. Take notes like this. Study. 
it's quite useful for downloading any readings or handouts or practice exams, homework assignments all onto my iPad without needing to print them out or anything like that. I would advise, just as a little tip, try to download all these documents ahead of time before the lecture for that day starts. Just make sure you have it all ready to go and set up and then you can just dive right into taking notes once class starts. So one of my other tips is to copy and paste, take screenshots and copy and paste into your notes. This is something that I used a lot, especially when I was taking notes based off of the handouts that the professors gave in class. So just to show you, I have a page from a notebook, random notebook called practice. So for example, if I wanted to talk about nucleophilicity in my notes, this is really, really just hastily done. So excuse the handwriting and everything. But if I'm talking about nucleophilicity and I wanted to take a screenshot of a chart from my notes that had to do with that, I would go over to that page in my notes and then you could take a screenshot and then it shows it perfectly and then you just go back press and hold paste and then there you have your chart and so it's really really great for you to customize your notes and really take the pieces that you mostly need to focus on without everything being jumbled together another cool thing about that is you can select it and resize so that if you need to make more space you can do that which is just something that you could never do with physical notes you know the beauties of technology so that's something that i use a lot for sure we're losing light here so i have to go fast so something else that's really useful that is specific to the iPad, not necessarily the app, is being able to use the split screen feature. So what you can do is you can literally drag windows to show them side by side, which is kind of insane. So here you can see that I have on one side my notes and then on the other side the handout from class which is really useful if I'm for example jotting down notes of things to keep in mind whenever I'm solving certain questions or answering a question using my notes. I can easily look at them side by side without having to go back and forth which is something that I found helped a lot whenever I was reviewing or studying for an exam. And then finally as a general note taking tip try to color code and use keywords and really structure your notes so that they're organized because even though it's handwritten in because they're digital notes your good notes app can actually recognize the words that you have handwritten and have them show up in search features if you're looking up like a certain concept or anything like that i was actually really surprised to find that out but technology it's kind of insane so for example if i write down youtube and then i go to the search feature and i look up YouTube then it'll literally show up right there under the written notes option and then it can take you straight to that page absolutely crazy but it works and it helps a lot for when you're looking for a certain note that you took or a page from one of your notebooks at the very least make sure it's organized well so you can find the notes easily even though it's digital I always hated when I was taking physical notes maybe I had written all these beautiful pages and pages of notes but I couldn't do the control F fine feature like I really hated that but you can do that on your iPad so make sure that you make it as easy for yourself and for the software as possible by writing neatly and organizing your notes well so again I don't have a ton of tips but that was the general idea of what I did during the last semester so to wrap it up I will show you some of the notes that I took and the structure for it also the pen sizes and styles and colors and features and all that it's definitely nothing fancy nothing special it might change the semester it might not but nonetheless I will show you how I did it last semester so for example something I did a lot was just using thicker pen styles for the title pages all caps and color coding this is quite useful for when I'm scrolling through my notes quickly and I'm looking at the colors color coding was something I always do so of course I do it for my digital notes as well so I use the highlighter features and different colors and as you can see I had a habit of writing like week 2 or lecture 12 just to make sure that I could easily search them up if I ever had to go back to it later I really did use quite a basic format um, I just did like bullet points arrows sometimes I would write little notes on the side it's really nothing special so sorry if this is disappointing at all but it is really what I did for my notes it was this and writing on slides which is also just jotting down extra notes about whatever the professor is saying. I usually like using fountain pen or brush pen for the titles and section headers, but if not, then I can easily just do the ball pen with a thicker width. And then to go into that, because I generally stick to the ball pen, for the thinnest setting, I would use 0.3 millimeters, the thickest usually 0.65 to 0.7 and then the thickest I just keep it on two millimeters and then colors I use pretty basic primary colors unless my notes are really detailed then I'll go for all kinds of colors as you can see I usually
usually use a darkish gray instead of a black for my notes. I don't know why. I feel like the black is kind of harsh on the eyes. And then I like using light blues, dark yellows, light greens, reddish pinks. And I really just cycle through them. It's usually consistent within classes, not like across my classes. So I have different note taking styles that varies from class to class. I don't really take it too seriously in terms of making it look aesthetically pleasing per se. I like to have it look neat and colorful, I guess, but I'm not too concerned about making it like insanely beautiful because that's not as functional. I think that's something that I've learned over the years is you want to make sure that your notes, even though you can certainly, you know, make them pretty, it should be functional for you. Like that's the end goal. So if making it pretty takes away from that, then you shouldn't do that. Okay, so that is pretty much it for my notes. It's gotten quite dark outside. It's kind of late in the day, but I hope that you're still able to enjoy this video. I'm looking forward to figuring out new ways of using my iPad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Best of luck with the upcoming semester if you are a student, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Tu ci vuoi